I'm Katrina Walker. Welcome to Unbreakable Truths. Let me put you on to something. Come a little close. Here's how it goes. I started a career in hip hop that spanned over 35 years has led to a movie. Welcome back. We continue our conversation with Roxanne Shante. I watch your movie. I watch your movie. Oh my God. It was just simply, it, it, it was just a wonderful, touching movie. And there's so many parts of it that touched me, mm -hmm. you know. And I think one of the ones that, one of the things that really touched me in that movie was when you were waiting on your, your dad to come and get you. Yeah. You recall that? Yes, and, I do. And, and, you know, sitting here with you now, what were the feelings going through you at that moment, even reminiscing and playing that particular part? and him not showing up, and your mom looking out the window. I think what it was when my sisters and I were sitting outside, yes. it was a, I want to say, and I can say this now because life is so good, yes, that yes. it was the perfect prerequisite to prepare me for, um, I guess, my domestic mm -hmm. violence relationships, mm -hmm. um, for even my relationships, my business relationships in the industry. Yes. It also prepared me for hip-hop. It was like the perfect prerequisite for it. It allowed me to understand that mm -hmm. I am not to wait on anyone. Yes. That I am responsible yes. for my sisters and family. Yes. And that their happiness means everything to me. And so sitting there that day, I think the thing that hurt me the most regarding yes. it uh -huh. was the sadness for my sisters. Because right. I was already, yeah. you know, I was already a, a booster, which is uh -huh. a person who borrows uh -huh. stuff from the store. Right, right, right. And, right, right. Uh, okay. you know, so I was already, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was already yeah. a booster. Yes. And, um, so I had already learned how to supplement my income. So uh -huh. it wasn't that we wanted our dad there for the financial support, uh -huh. which most families need. Right. But it was like I needed him there because I felt that my sisters and I were going to make some really wrong decisions, some tough decisions without having some type of uh, male yep. influence in order to compare it to. Because when you don't have that, when and, you don't and, have right. it, that's and, what happens. Absolutely. And, and I guess that's what touched me the most, you know, because I used to always hear you know, girls say daddy's girl or people say daddy's girl. Mm -hmm. And I never knew my father. Mm -hmm. So my mom always told me she was my daddy, but she, she was a cousin. She said, go. I'm your MF and daddy. There but I would ask her who he was. So, you know, to see that part and then remember that I had two younger sisters. So on payday back in the day, mama would send us to his house mm -hmm. to get some money and he would hide from his children. So when I saw that with your little sisters and yourself and your mama mm -hmm. looking out the window, that just really, it, it, it devastated me. I mean, I literally, I cried because of the me going back to my childhood Aww. and just, you know, being able to feel, you know, the pain. The Absolutely. Hurt. And I, and you know, and I hate to sit here and say, okay, well, you know what, that's what the movie was supposed to do. Because in all reality, what it is, is that it was the story of so many little girls. Yes. And it was the right time for it to be told. Right. And I'm going to tell you how good God is. Because oh, see, only God can yes. line certain things up for you. Mm -hmm. Had not made records in over 30 years. Okay. And um, when this opportunity presented itself for yes. me to be able to make this movie, mm -hmm. um, didn't even know what I was going to do financially. Didn't know how this was going to come about. And then to get calls from Forrest Whitaker and then for them to say, okay, well, look, you know, here's a check and literally a check with no number on it, you know, and then to have Pharrell and his company come on board and say, yes. you know, here's a check and, yes. and don't worry about it. Just go ahead and make the movie. And then to have Mahershala Ali walk up who had just received yes. an Oscar and yes. a Golden Globe Award yes. for him to say, look, I got yes. 28 days yes. to film a movie. Yes. And most people were saying that it took them like years and years. There was some animosity regarding going to um, Sundance and being able to do the movie there because mm -hmm. the movie wasn't even completed, yeah. you know? And um, they were saying, well, if the movie's not in the can and the movie's not completed, then how does she get into Sundance? And I tell them, you know, God does my promotion. You Amen. Can't, I can't control where Amen. he's going to put it or where he's going. Because see, I done danced with the devil in the pale moonlight many a night. Oh, don't talk to me, And girl. sometimes he a best fucking dancer. Ain't he, baby? What? Dance that he do, he dip you. What? Are you back? What? Up? Okay. But anyway. So, so. Because <laughs> I'm understanding. I can relate. It's so relatable. So talk to go. me. Absolutely. Go ahead. So the thing about him, so uh -huh. when we got to Sundance, uh -huh. the movie wasn't even done. My first time seeing wow. my movie completed uh -huh. was inside a theater uh -huh. with thousands of other people. Yes. Because... 
I, the finished product wasn't done yet. Wow. So oh. when I had to sit up on stage and actually tell the story, you know, there were a lot of people who I looked out into the crowd and I noticed that they were like arms crossed, they were upset. Yes. But I had been dealing with that my entire life. Right. Because right. sometimes right. people just don't, they're not happy to see you happy. Yes. They're, and they they're don't want to see you succeed. Right. right. So I already dealt with that right. my entire exactly. life. I'm a battle so you, rapper. Yeah, right. Battle so, rapper, group home right. girl, runaway, right. abused child. So you know, you so know I know every, that every you, you like a cat. Nine lives, you don't live Absolutely. more than a cat. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, so, yes. I, so I already seen these faces right. and I already knew how to deal with them. Right. And um, I would think that it was going to be different because this was actually a different mm -hmm. industry. Yes. But it's never. Right. Because it may be a different industry, but it's still the same life. And then, you know what I want to know, Roxanne? How mm -hmm. did you feel? I'm sure there were so many people when you mentioned what you just mentioned. Yes. So many people saying, you know, no, it ain't going to work. You know, just haters. You could just smell no, that. Praying. Hate. Praying. But, but, it's but, been more but it's still like how the, the, mm -hmm. the thing reversed. Everything Absolutely. good, you know, because nobody can overpower the good Lord. No, they can't. You know, and so all these great things happened. For yes, you. yes. I am so happy for you. Thank you, I thank you, so sweetie. You. Thank you. And I looked at these people, and mm -hmm. I told them a story. Like I filmed an entire movie. Yes. Twenty eight days, um, with with A stars, with A listers, and I was glued to the TV. Yes, I'm telling you, baby. I was in Memphis, glued to the TV, baby. And I didn't even know like. Parking permits were yes. two hundred and thirty thousand dollars per oh day. God. Yes. Because what we did was we actually locked down Queensbridge Public Housing, is which is the project that I grew up in, which is the largest housing project in the world. Yeah. But because I still gave back to the community, yes. you know, I still did bingo with people's grandmas. Mm -hmm. I still sent mm -hmm. people's children to summer camp. Mm -hmm. I hired all the extras that were in the movie. Yes. Actually, were from the projects. Right. So I was knocking on doors like, listen. Never forgot where you came. From. Never forgot. So yes. because of that. Mm -hmm. I had the entire project behind oh me. My God. So people were saying, listen, a housing project, yes. you're not going to be able to lock it down the housing See project. See how people can say. You're going to have problems People there. can say, and, and they I don't know had, what mm -hmm. they're talking about. That's right. And I never had one yes. problem. You see? Mm -hmm. You see? And I, that's why I even say, you can't always listen to these people. You're not supposed to. No. You're not supposed to. No. Because if we did, we wouldn't be sitting here now. Um, with my Netflix deal, they don't even offer that deal no more. Uh -huh. Okay. The Netflix deal was a pay, uh, pay-per-view type deal. Wow. Where, where they actually pay you for each time the movie is watched. Mm. And um, yes. I think what it is is that, again, only God, Just you can walk into a room and someone feels that you may not be who they think you are. They may not feel that you're worth what they yes. think you are. They may feel right. that, okay, well, you know what? I'm just going to, like, they try to push you to the side, but don't realize who you are. How did you handle you that? How did you handle that? I handled it gracefully. I, listen, I, I just walk in. I'm uh -huh. saying, like, I'm not a person who gets dressed up right. because I'm so blessed up. Right, See, go ahead. See, people got confused. They okay. got to be all dressed up right. and fancy. Right, That's not it. So you, you, you know went in there just in being just Roxanne, being you. Just, just, just being me, walking being in regular clothes. That's all you can be, you know? This is the project. Can't be nothing but yourself. What do you think? Mm -hmm. We knew that Netflix was a definitely the perfect platform because right. it was a daddy-daughter movie. It was a family generational movie. People actually sit back and say, I've seen your movie three times, four times, five times, six times. Me, and they, me. Thank you. And they wouldn't be able to do that unless they were in the comforts or the confinement of their own home where they're able to say, okay, come watch this movie with me. Yes. And that's what I wanted. I knew that that's where we were going with so it. So touching. So they offered me the deal. And to date, it is the most rewatched, binge watched movie ever. Amen. On Netflix. Yes, yes. And people say, well, you know, you don't walk mm. like it, you don't talk like it. And I say, well, when you're really blessed, how are you supposed to walk and talk? You're just supposed to be nice to people. You're just supposed to be good to people and you're supposed to give back. Oh so you that's, so you know, blessed. so what you see in front of you is, is oh, a blessing of blessings. One other question that I want to ask you about this Netflix movie. Absolutely. How did Neil Long? Get involved with that. Because she said nobody can play your mama like Oh, me. my God. Did she not play your mama? Oh, she played Ooh. mama. And she looks like my mother. <laughs> Does she? Yes, yes. So it's like okay. it's also a thing where you say we all come from, you know, everyone, there's certain <laughs> tribes, and we all come from those tribes. Yeah. So right. she looks just like, you know, she looks just like my mom. Roxanne. Yes. Look, being a woman myself and just having friends that was diagnosed mm -hmm. with um, breast cancer, were you checking your breasts when you found out? Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of times as women, you know, we're told every after you reach a certain age, 40. And a lot of women, of course, don't go get checked. Were you feeling something? Was it, you know, just something unusual about, you know, your breast to notice? Well, I was actually, um, I wasn't even 40 years old. I, wasn't I, 40? I wasn't even 40. I was in my 30s, and that's why I tell 
um, women, it's very important to not put timelines or to not let the public mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. physicians put a timeline on mm -hmm. when you should check to yes. see if you're okay. Yes. I feel like as soon as you get breast, you need to start checking. Check. As soon as you feel any different, you need to start checking. And you checking. say feel any different. If you see they... anything different. If they're not, if they're not hanging the same, oh, okay. check them. If they're you not know. hanging the same. If they're not hanging the same. Because I know once you have babies, you know. They start to hang a little bit. Right, exactly. But we tend to think or oh, overlook it. But would it be a discharge or something? No, actually it's not. What uh, it is, I, is that no. a structure. There was a, for me, uh -huh. there was a structural change. Okay. Because what I have is called ductal carcinoma. So mm -hmm. ductal carcinoma only affects the I milk see. ducts itself. So the main yes. factor is that. I didn't have any babies to breastfeed, so yes. I wouldn't necessarily have to mm -hmm. go back and figure out, okay, well, why is this happening, or am I having any pain or yeah. anything like that? No, it wasn't the that pain, way at all. Like you said, you know, no, it no was pain. the structure. I looked at them and I said, you know what? Maybe I'm getting older because this is what you figure. Okay, but I'm, you're I'm in my yeah, but I was young. I was in my thirties, right. yeah. and you know, like my, my grandma, I, I slept in a squeeze form bra. Right. Like I followed the rules. Right. I slept in a bra. Like yes. my, they wasn't under my arms right. at night. Right. Not the wire. You know, I didn't I don't do none of that. Well, yes. you know, because you know, my grandma. At the time, she was still able to like literally lift her shirt up. She was still intact. She said, "You know, all that cover man, everybody squeeze a touch on them and all that other stuff." But anyway, yeah, you whole, know, grandma got something. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother show. You <laughs> yes, know what I'm saying? But, yes, but the yes. main thing is that you know, I still had my mm -hmm. good old black cotton squeeze form bra right, that you sleep right, in. Right. You know what I look like? Home. I know what you're talking about. You yes. know, so. Um, I'm saying, like, why is my structure changing? And, and being I, so young, and you notice so young, the difference. Right. So, so I said, you know, let me just go get a mammogram. Let me just go see what this is. And um, let me just go and do this because they was just a way of just checking out the breast. And um, I remember my technician saying, so where do you go get treatment? And I was like, wow. treatment? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. She's, yeah. She was so apologetic. She was so sorry. Yes, so, cause she, so I told her to give me a minute. I said, please just, you know, leave yes, out the room. Yes. So I sat there on the table and mm -hmm. I remember saying to myself and then also talking to God and saying to God, like, okay, so what lesson is going to come out of this? Out of because this. you didn't put me through everything. Like yeah. you didn't put me through the ringer. This is how I was feeling, you know, talking to God. Cause you know, you talk to God as a friend right. and you get a better understanding yes. as to what's going on and then yes. you feel better. So, you know, I'm talking to him the same way I would talk to my friends, right. you know? And I was like, uh, you know, so what part of the game is this, God? You know, I've been through it all. What now? And then, you know, I remember my grandma telling me that I was going to be one of those people that God was going to use to go through things so that I could speak from experience. Yes, absolutely. So, yes. And she said, so never, ever worry about not fine. getting through it you're because be fine, you're going right? to be fine because yes. God uses He's you. He's going to spare you so you exactly. can be around. But you're going to go through it. You're going to go through it through me. Yeah, you're going to go gonna get it. over there on that other side. So you're going to. Right. Just keep going. Right. You're going to go through it. Don't right. stop and wallow in this. You know how folks used to tell you back yes. in the day. Don't wallow in right. this shit, man. Right. Right. Don't wallow in it. Just keep on going because God right. is using you as an example uh -huh. for other people. Yes. So I never once thought I wasn't going to survive. Even when I went to my oncologist, my spirit was so good that my oncologist literally mm -hmm. had tears in his eyes. And he was like, I've never had a patient like you before. Yes. And he said, it's just something about you. And, and, and we need to keep you here. So yes. I went through my uh, partial mastectomies, lumpectomies, mm -hmm. biopsies. Um, and I'm still fully intact, oh. which is a blessing. Amen. And um, Amen. I, have, I have minimal Amen. scars. But yes. what I do is each year, mm -hmm. and people go on my Instagram, each year I post up my scars. Uh -huh. Because I know that there's some woman somewhere to that needs to see oh, that, yes. that understands that. I don't call them scars. I call them beauty marks. Amen. And it's the beauty of surviving. Amen. So if I just have these mm -hmm. marks, these mm -hmm. are beauty marks. Are and so that's what I'm doing. I'm, these are the beauty of surviving and these are marks from it. Yes. And so, so many women started following me and I started something called Rocktober, mm -hmm. which is, um, I do it every October and I do anywhere from 21 to 25 events. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I party every, mm -hmm. I'm literally on the radio during the day. I'm yes. partying every evening. Right. I'm going to, uh, chemo sessions, I'm sitting through um, and, and sessions And I love that about you because you, you didn't stop living. No. You know, a lot no. of times people get so, they fall into this depression. Right. But you never, you know, that's why the doctor said, I've never seen anyone act like that. Yes. You know, behave like that. But, you know, I mean, I want to say again, thank you, you know, because you're helping other women. Yes. All women. Not just black women, but especially, I say the black women because a lot of times we don't know, we don't have that person that shares these type of things and thank you for helping absolutely. women young women older women absolutely, you know, absolutely. With that. two times praise the lord yes yes, yes and lord. so with my second time uh -huh. um i just knew that it was going to be a walk in the park and i tell people yeah. don't go by 
exactly what it is that I experienced because that's my experience. That's how it worked out for me. Uh-huh. I tell everyone to please make sure that you go and you see your physician, you go and see your see oncologist, your you take your medications if they're required, you know, you do, do these the things. things. But all I ask you to do is keep a positive attitude right. because right. a positive attitude is really what gets you through most things in life. Amen. Congratulations on all of your many Thank blessings you. and many more. And one more thing, I just want you to tap in about your foundation one more time, the beautiful things that you're doing. What we're going <laughs> to do now is a, what we call is a holiday pre-shop because these are children whose first time was in foster care. Oh, so yes. this is going to be their first year uh-huh. dealing without being with their parents and uh-huh. things like that and I, and so I go around and I will do certain events and things and whatever it is that oh. is financially beneficial from there I just give oh. it all to them you know I just make sure that they all have it they, they get a chance to go to stores and you know some kids are going to get coats and some kids are going to get oh, boots and saying. shoes but they need that because so sweet. I know oh, there was God. times when I wish somebody would have came along and gave, given me something without it being in ulterior mode so you know something. what it feels like yes I do you I know, know for these like. children because you, yes. like you said yourself, child, you, well, you know, you would have been that. fortunate enough to have somebody to do the same for right. you, and you're giving back in such a way. Y'all have fun today. Yeah. I just feel like we have a lot in common. Yes, I love you, do. my sister. I love you too. <laughs> All right. <laughs>